Hello, my name is Brittany Jones and I am a scientist at the National Marine Mammal Foundation. And I work on a project that we lovingly refer to as sound and health. Our overall goal is to develop tools and methods that can non-invasively record and utilize the vocal behavior of the Navy's bottlenose dolphins for monitoring their health and welfare. Let's call this the umbrella focus, and then we can dive into all of the different approaches that we are currently implementing. For each approach, I will introduce the concept from the human or terrestrial animal standpoint, and then follow that with a description of how we are applying it to the dolphins. Here is a dad cooking dinner for his children who are playing upstairs. Although he cannot watch the kids every moment, he can perceive a lot about their health and welfare based on the sounds that they make. So if he hears this, this would likely be perceived as a positive welfare indicator, and he might not have anything to be concerned about. But if he hears this, he might perceive that differently. He could potentially do something to check on the kids or mitigate the situation. We also use this idea with our animals. How many of you have heard of a furbo? I am not going to lie, I tried to use this with my dogs and it scared them to death. But many people love it. The furbo watches and listens for your dog and will send you a push notification when your dog is barking a lot. Now, depending on your dog's typical behavior and demeanor, you might infer different things when you get that notification. For example, maybe it is just another Amazon delivery at your door. Or maybe someone has come into your home. Maybe you use your furbo to see how long it takes for your dog to quiet down after you leave the house. And you use that as a positive indicator that your dog is calm and not stressed. Programs to monitor the acoustics of farm animals are currently being developed to improve the health and welfare for these animals as well. For example, monitoring for sounds of coughing allows for early intervention to stop the spread of respiratory infection in pigs. Over the last three years, we have essentially created a furbo for dolphins. Unfortunately, it does not throw treats, but it does monitor their acoustic behavior. The Navy dolphins get to go out swimming open water every day, but they come home and reside in open water enclosures in San Diego Bay. We have been recording our dolphins around the clock for almost two years now. This is our underwater hydrophone array. Now a hydrophone is just a microphone that is made to be used in water. This array is made up of four hydrophones and sits on the floor of the bay and records all of the sounds coming in from our dolphins. Thanks to the help of Mike Oswald, we have created a custom program in PamGuard that is free for anyone to download and use. This plugin is called NMMF Welfare Acoustic Monitoring System, or WAMS. We have spent the last three years developing a vocal catalog for 11 of our dolphins. Each dolphin has a signature whistle, which is an individually distinctive whistle contour, and it has a stereotyped pattern of frequency modulation over time. We will be viewing whistles in spectrograms a lot throughout this talk. These are spectrograms. Spectrograms are visual depictions of that pattern of frequency or pitch change over time. Time is on the x-axis, frequency in kilohertz is on the y-axis, and the lighter colors depict a louder sound. Therefore, a dolphin's signature whistle always appears to have the same shape when viewed on a spectrogram. These are signature whistle examples from our dolphins. You can see how they're individually unique. Signature whistles are produced most commonly when a dolphin is separated from its group because the signature whistle broadcasts the dolphin's identity. Now that we know what a signature whistle is, 
Let's see how we can utilize this with our around-the-clock recordings. We have developed a baseline typical acoustic behavior for our group of dolphins. The center line represents the mean vocal activity during each hour for our group of dolphins. You can see the extended shadow in light blue depicts two standard errors above the mean. You can see that during the night there is very low vocal activity, which is a great indication that our dolphins are getting a good amount of rest. You can see the vocal activity picks up about the time that the animal care staff arrive, and the dolphins remain chatty throughout the day. When the vocal activity follows this normal pattern, we interpret that everything is going well. If there were to be a big spike in whistle activity outside of the normal average, our team gets an email notification with an image of that spectrogram so we can see what is triggering our alarm. We know, thanks to the localization abilities of the array, whether the sound is coming from a male or female dolphin. And because we know many of the dolphin's whistle repertoires, we can make an educated guess about what dolphin might be the animal that is whistling a lot. Similar to a dog who is barking more than usual, we can have the animal care staff check in on that dolphin and make sure everything is all right. Let's go check in on our good friend, Dad. Here he is cooking his dinner and he hears a, a loud crash. Although this sound isn't coming directly from the kids' mouths, he knows that something has happened in the area and will likely react to that loud noise by going to investigate further to make sure that the crash does not negatively affect his kids. We similarly monitor the dolphin's environment for loud sounds that are in the dolphin's hearing range. Did you know that most boat sonar is out of the human range of hearing? This is done intentionally so we don't cause hearing loss to the operators and it is harder to detect by listeners. Unfortunately, the dolphins have excellent hearing in this range. They can even hear up to over 160 kilohertz. So oftentimes these sounds can be right in the sweet spot of dolphin hearing. They can also mask a dolphin's ability to communicate with other animals by putting a loud sound right in the frequency range that they use to communicate. All of that around the clock data that we record with WAMS is then passed to a second program that was written by Dr. Jason Molso in LabVIEW. This scans those recordings for sounds that are abnormally loud and weights them by the dolphin hearing curve. So it's not so concerned if the sound is loud but outside the dolphin's hearing range. This also triggers an alarm to the research team if a sound is over the threshold. This allows us to identify loud sound sources and pass that information up the chain of command for mitigation efforts if that sound is deemed too loud. All right, now that we're broadly monitoring the animals and their environment around the clock, now we want to zoom in, look at their vocalizations a little more closely. We have all experienced a loved one who comes down with a bad cold. But some of the first things that we may notice when they just start getting sick are changes in their voice. Maybe raspy or nasal qualities often characterize a respiratory or sinus infection. But what about other things? What about a slowed, quieter speech rate? Might this suggest that something is wrong? Yes. We can often perceive that someone is down, and depressed, or exhausted based on these types of changes in voice. How might you perceive the internal state of a human that is speaking loud and, and fast and, and with scattered thoughts? There is actually a massive push right now to develop telehealth applications for early identifying illness from voice. The last five to 10 years has been remarkable in the strides they have made. Some of the recent research coming out in this field that is early predicting things like Parkinson's disease, depression, diabetes, respiratory infection, panic attacks, heart disease, even COVID-19. 
all from voice recordings that people can do from the comfort of their own home. Here's a little clip from the company Sond that I think does a really good job in describing this idea. At Sond, our mission is to unlock voice as a vital sign and predictor of health. We're harnessing this information to bring voice-enabled health detection and tracking to the world. For example, when speaking with someone you know well, within seconds, you can notice they don't sound like themselves. Maybe the person is sick, tired, or feeling down. You're intuitively listening to vocal biomarkers. Our voices contain vocal biomarkers that give valuable information about certain health conditions every time we speak. With SON's proprietary machine learning technology, derived from millions of data points coming from tens of thousands of SON users, we have built intelligent tools that track health changes by analyzing just a few seconds of voice. Let's stick with the human voice example a little longer. If I've never heard a human voice in general, I would really have a hard time perceiving anything from human voice because I have no experience with it. Now, if I have heard healthy human voices, but never unhealthy human voices, I would similarly have a hard time perceiving health from the voice. If I have heard both healthy and unhealthy voices in general, but I have never heard your voice before, I would probably still struggle to guess if you were sick or not just the first time I hear your voice. But I might be able to generalize my knowledge from other human voices to make an educated guess. The best chance that I have is if I have a lot of experience with your voice and also other more general human voice changes during different health statuses. So, in order to even begin to assess whether we could successfully use this same approach with dolphins, the first thing we needed to do was find out what our dolphins sound like when they are healthy. This is where we had to start. We needed to identify the vocal repertoire of our dolphins identify what kinds of whistles they make, how commonly they make them, what whistle contours are shared among more than one of our dolphins, and what are the main acoustic characteristics of all those common whistles. As we were identifying the signature whistles of our dolphins, we quickly noticed that many of our dolphins were also producing the same whistle contour as one another, which we termed the group whistle. You can see the signature whistles of each dolphin on the left side of the screen, which are distinctive from each other. And on the right is each dolphin producing the group whistle. You can see how similar the group whistle contours are to each other. In order to confirm that this pattern that we were seeing was true, we used naive observers and asked them to do pairwise comparisons to grade the similarity of whistle contours, both signature and group whistles, both between and within dolphins. We also use discriminant function analyses to statistically test this. As expected, a dolphin signature whistle was highly similar to all of that animal's other signature whistles, whereas two different dolphin signature whistles were quite different. A dolphin's group whistle was still most similar to other emissions of its own group whistle but you can see that one dolphin's group whistle was also highly similar to other dolphin's group whistles. A discriminant functions analysis also confirmed what our observers found. Each color represents a dolphin, and each signature whistle is depicted as an open circle. As you can see, all of the open circles cluster with the other signature whistles from that dolphin. The group whistles are depicted by solid circles, and you can see the group whistles all clustered tightly together, regardless of the dolphin producing it. And they did not cluster with their own dolphin signature whistle. If we come back to this bar graph, what was interesting was that the dolphin's group whistle was significantly more similar to its own group whistles than to other dolphin's group whistles. This could be useful for other dolphins to know which animal is producing the group whistle. If you'd like to read more, please read our manuscript in PLOS One. After we identified the common acoustic characteristics of our healthy dolphin whistles, but we also set out to describe some characteristics that were common in the human and mammalian literature, but relatively unstudied in dolphin whistles to date. For example, 
Humans rely on pitch declination and inflection to perceive a lot of information from words that otherwise would be the same. Listen to this example. Need help? Need help! While the words and even the voice can be the same, based on where the emphasis or relative energy is, we perceive a lot more information, such as urgency, stress, sex of the speaker, the emotional status of the speaker. Dolphin signature whistles are, are so stable, we found it unlikely that changes in pitch across the whistle contour would be the best way for them to convey these kinds of changes. So we set out to identify if the relative amplitude changes across the signature whistle were also stereotyped, like frequency is, or if, like in humans, they were variable. This culminated in the preparation of two manuscripts on this topic. The first study found that the relative amplitude modulations over a signature whistle were not stereotyped. First, let's look at 50 signature whistles from the same dolphin plotted on top of each other with peak frequency on the y-axis and standardized time on the x-axis. You can see how consistently stereotyped signature whistle frequency contours are. In this figure, you see the same 50 whistle contours as last time, but this figure depicts the relative standardized amplitude changes on the y-axis and that same time scale on the x-axis. It is obvious that the amplitude modulations are not nearly as stereotyped as the frequency contours were. This could mean that they are just completely random and meaningless. Or it could be that this is an avenue for them to communicate additional information outside of just identity across a signature whistle contour. We also found a consistently negative linear relationship between the log transformed peak frequency depicted on the x-axis and the relative log amplitude on the y-axis suggesting that the lower frequencies tended to carry more energy than the higher frequency bands. This might be useful since lower frequencies carry better in water, or maybe it could be based on a resonant frequency within each dolphin. This is something we're interested in looking at further. Our final model also included a significant quadratic effect of time. This figure depicts the mean relative log amplitude over a standardized time x axis for all of the dolphin whistles. This is essentially showing a fade in and then fade out pattern of relative amplitude over time. Further confirming this pattern, we found that the first 5% of the contour had significantly less energy than the center or final 5%, and that the final 5% had significantly less energy than the center five. This also depicts that fade in, fade out pattern. This pattern reminded us of another fade in and then fade out pattern that Dr. Ridgway found many years ago in his studies of the dolphin nasal system. Using reaction time studies where the dolphin was trained to respond to a playback stimulus with a whistle, he was able to use nasal pressure catheters to measure the pressure changes in the sound production apparatus during whistling. You can see here that the nasal system begins to increase in pressure, which is depicted by the white arrows just prior to the start of the whistles. But then it continues to build up in pressure, finding its peak at some point over the course of the whistle, depicted here with a blue arrow, at which point it begins to depressurize before the whistle comes to an end and returns to baseline following the whistle emission, depicted by the second white arrows. We hypothesize that this is the mechanism of that quadratic energy pattern that we found, and we look forward to testing whether these cues are perceived and used by dolphins to manage whistle interactions. Well, what do we mean by that? Well, humans can predict when someone is going to finish a thought or utterance based on both frequency and amplitude declination, or a decrease at the end of a sentence. This helps us to not interrupt and maintain efficient communication. 
Well, dolphins also talk back and forth with antiphonal whistle exchanges, like the one you see here. The dolphin on the right is going to be depicted in the spectrogram on the top panel, and the dolphin on the left is going to be depicted on the spectrogram on the bottom panel. You can see they also maintain tight temporal sequencing during their exchanges. We suggest that because of the stereotyped frequency patterns and the dolphin's common use of multi-looped and multiple iterations of their signature whistle, that frequency declination may not be the best turn-taking cue. We hypothesize that it's the amplitude declination from that depressurization of the nasal sacs that could potentially be used as an honest cue in this context. Another relatively unstudied characteristic of dolphin whistles are called nonlinear phenomena, or NLP. Humans produce NLP when their vocal cords are pushed past their limits. Think about the noisy, screechy characteristic if you really yelled at someone. While the mechanism is based on the vocal apparatus, humans use these cues to infer things like urgency, stress, anger, need. For example, infant cries are characterized by NLP and are very attention-getting. Many other species produce NLP within their calls, and they are commonly associated with calls of the young, alarm calls, distress calls, territorial calls, or socially agnostic calls. There have been some previous descriptions of the presence of these noisy or chaotic characteristics of bottlenose calf vocalizations. A recent publication of ours actually found that a calf's whistles had NLP with over 70% of the whistles that they produced with bubble streams during the first 30 days of their life. That said, when these qualities are produced with adult dolphin whistles, they are typically considered noisy or unclear and often omitted from further analysis because the signal to noise ratio isn't as good or there's overlapping vocalizations that can't be confirmed whether it's coming from one dolphin or more than one dolphin. Based on human and other mammalian reports, we felt that the presence of these characteristics may be important for health and welfare. So we set out to define them and then quantify the use of NLP by healthy adult bottlenose dolphins. These are the four main categories of NLP. Biphonations, subharmonics, sidebands, and deterministic chaos. We have a manuscript being submitted by the end of this year that you can check out if you're interested in how we defined these four different NLP. For our healthy bottlenose dolphin whistles, an average of 47.2% of each animal's signature whistles contained at least one occurrence of NLP. And every one of our focal dolphins produced their signature whistles both with and without NLP. Like in this example here, this signature whistle is from the same dolphin and in one case is produced without NLP, and in another case produced with a lot of NLP. And further, signature whistles could contain multiple types of NLP over the duration of one whistle emission. We believe this was a highly overlooked whistle characteristic that we have now developed a baseline for each of our dolphins with. Now that we have built a robust vocal catalog for each of our focal dolphins with examples of the whistle types they make, the frequency, time, energy, and NLP characteristics that these whistles have, we have been working with Dr. Abby McLean to develop definitions of normal and abnormal health for our focal animals. Lucky for us, our dolphins are extremely healthy and they receive top-of-the-line medical care. That said, it takes a little bit of time 
to build up any kind of data set on instances of abnormal health in this population. As we collect recordings of these dolphins opportunistically, we have worked with Risa Daniels and the Veterinary Records Office to develop scripts that can translate our health definitions into queries to be able to query the Navy Marine Mammal Program's extensive health database on these animals for dates that fit the description of either optimal health or the dates that fit one of our abnormal health definitions. This outputs dates for each dolphin where their health statuses are confirmed by health record and veterinary observations. We then pair these dates to dates that we have recordings of that individual and are building a database of whistles recorded during each condition. We are so grateful to the Office of Naval Research who have just funded the second leg of this project. The next three years will center around these data sets that we have been building upon over the last three years. We are collaborating with two amazing data scientists, Jeremy Karnowski and Dr. Benny Boramins, who are helping us develop models in machine learning and deep learning for taking all of that data input and predicting health outcomes from it. Like we touched on earlier, one of the fastest growing fields in human healthcare is developing artificial intelligence technology to predict health statuses from vocal biomarkers. The technology that is at the forefront of this development comes from deep learning neural networks. These begin with inputs, so for example, speech segments, which then are passed through several layers of nodes of connected neurons that progressively detect features and characteristics of the inputs without human interference. And finally, provide an output, which is oftentimes a classification. They remove human biases, and they can identify interactions, relationships, and patterns that may not be obvious to a human analyst. Deep neural networks have shown great success in identifying marine mammal vocalizations from both non-animal sounds, for example, other environmental and anthropogenic noises, and classifying calls between marine mammal species. A recent study was able to train a small neural network to successfully identify chickens with bronchitis from healthy chickens, just from their vocalizations. But nothing like this has yet to be attempted with dolphins. The first thing we set out to do was to figure out what the best inputs for our model might be. The most efficient computing option is for the model to use the raw audio data. But because there has been so much work in computer vision, we know that there's a larger foundation to build upon if we were to use spectrogram images. In order to be able to identify which variables are the most meaningful for predicting health status, we also need to run models using the hand-coded variables so that we can get more finite characteristics. But that input is really time intensive. We also have two different output goals. The first being that we would like the model to be able to predict what dolphin made the whistle that was recorded. And then of course the next goal is for it to be able to predict the health status of that whistling animal. When it comes to identifying the signature whistles of 11 of our dolphins, the random chance of assigning a signature whistle to the correct producer by just naively guessing was between 9 and 16.5%. Our current model, using only the audio wave file as the input and deep learning strategies, was able to correctly assign the whistle to the correct dolphin almost 90% of the time. As we mentioned, the main goal of the project is to be able to not only predict who made the whistle, but further whether the dolphin was in a thriving healthy state or an abnormal health status when they made the whistle. In order to start to build this, we used all of the whistles produced by a dolphin, not just their signature whistles. And the random assignment of a health status for any given whistle would result in a success rate of between 59 and 65 percent because we have more recorded healthy whistles than we do abnormal whistles. Using that 1D wave file as the input 
for 5,055 whistles recorded from 11 different dolphins. The gradient boosted classifier was successful at predicting health status from the whistle features regardless of the producer almost 86% of the time. What was really interesting is that in only 4.5% of the whistles that were misclassified was the program giving a false alarm. So, so classifying a normal health whistle as abnormal. This is a great false alarm rate. The rest of the mistakes came from when the classifier classified the animal as healthy based on their vocalizations, when the health records depicted that there was something abnormal going on with that animal. This is actually an exciting error to have because this might suggest that depending on the type of health condition might affect whether the voice changes. These are the very preliminary results with sort of the first round of models that we've done. So we are looking forward to the next steps and to continue building our data set and improving upon these models. We have recently began to develop a new data set of whistles for use in developing these applied tools. These new recordings we have called acoustic physicals. We have just begun training our vocal dolphins to sink underwater and then produce their signature whistle when asked using a hand signal. This idea comes from those being deployed by the human vocal biomarkers applications. When you are healthy, you read a few predefined sentences when prompted by the app. And then when you are feeling unwell, you read those same sentences. And that helps the app to be able to learn what voice features change during different changes in your health status. We are hoping that dolphins that are asked to produce their signature whistles will have similar modifications as found in their spontaneous whistles when they experience a change in health status. We have just begun building this new data set. This will allow us to record whistles quickly from each dolphin nearly every week instead of on an opportunistic basis and build up a new data set that covers a larger array of health changes. This further allows us to incorporate a larger group of dolphins into our data set, which provides more generalizability for potential uses outside of just our focal group. For example, the potential use for conservation. Phew, that was a lot of ground that we just discussed. So let's put all of these seemingly separate pieces together within a larger picture. The ultimate idea would be that our dolphins could be going about their day whistling, and our underwater array would record those whistles. Then it would pass that audio to our neural network. Our neural network would use that 1B audio file and be able to give us a prediction for which animal made that sound. A second neural network would then have access to the sound's features and information about what animal most likely made that sound and then it would output a second prediction on whether that dolphin sounds totally normal or if their whistle sounds more similar to those that they have produced when they weren't feeling well in the past. How cool would that be if we could passively record the dolphins and get early warning signals of changes in health status? That about wraps things up for what we have been up to and are endeavoring to accomplish here in the Sound and Health Project at the National Marine Mammal Foundation. If you're excited about these ideas, have any questions, or are inspired for a collaboration, please reach out to me at my email address, which will be on the next slide. Thank you to all of the people that are listed here without whom the project would not be able to, to happen. And thank you to our amazing outreach team uh, that we have here at the foundation for putting these scientific snapshots together. Thank you all for coming. I think we have some time for questions, so I'm happy to take those now.